What's going on, people? This is Off Color Discussions. What's up? Go to offcolordiscussions.blueberry.net. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave a review, a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, if you're a musician or any type of lyrical artist or know somebody that is, tell them to email ocdiscussions at gmail dot com we're looking to get songs featured they're ones that we're gonna we'll go through we'll pick out best ones that, uh, that fit per episode really follow us on twitter at oc discussions for your chance to win a 25 dollars visa gift card and what else did i want to say uh i'm not really sure what happened with the whole nfl thing today uh i didn't look at it too much to to know what was going on or why so i don't want to comment on it too far i just one thing that surprises me or not surprises me one thing that i've been trying to think about a lot lately is the fact that it is 2017 only because that's how we've numbered stuff but it's still we're still not at the point where we don't realize that we're just fighting over who has better toys in a sandbox instead of realizing that we need what each other has to offer to evolve as people and as a species like it's it's about community that that's what this life is about and being part of that tribe and realizing that your tribe doesn't end at an imaginary line that somebody drew up that it's just about that so that's all i'm going to say about that uh i'd I'd have to look more into it i don't want to get that's just my thoughts on it uh i believe if you want real talk you gotta you gotta talk real so that's some that's some real talk uh this week's episode is a continuation chapter two if you will of vision quest west troy was here we talked about it part three will come down in the future it's awesome like it's like its own chapter of stuff like it's so crazy that uh the first chapter was about like synchronicity and stuff that something bad would happen and then there would be a, a good balance that would outweigh the uh the bad or you know what i mean like that the bad happened so that the good could happen after like it was just it's crazy how each chapter it's its own thing and this is its own thing you'll have to listen to find out like it it's awesome after that stick around for leon legacy uh songs called the echo you can look him up at leonlegacy.com uh check out his album 12 14 88 uh, he's got a new album coming out in november he's gonna come on the podcast uh we're gonna do a facebook live and he was gonna do a song from that episode uh i i look forward to meeting him it's funny how we got linked up while i was editing episode one and listening to that positive vibes about the synchronicity of stuff happening and then our paths crossed so it's it's awesome man i'm i'm enjoying this ride i know billy's enjoying this ride uh the plan is to get him on to do these intros and outros with me eventually when you know we have more free time but until then uh enjoy the episode like i said tell everybody you know we're grown our i think i found our voice and our voice is community and talking with the people and and growing uh through community like i said if you want real talk you gotta talk real so let's talk man and uh yeah let's let's get into it Oh, that's what I'm saying. I never had an outlook on him. Yeah. I never did. I didn't like to me. Colin Kaepernick. I don't know who that is. Like, always oh, a quarterback for San Francisco, maybe. Well, nobody, nobody. Yeah, nobody. Nobody. Like, so, I mean, so like, I don't. The, to me, it doesn't Dallas. matter because you know what? Like, I know what I. I joined the, the the military in a very naive state of my life where I was like, oh, you know, 9-11 happened. I was, how dare someone attack my country? I love my country. I'm going to go fight and defend my honor or a country's honor and defend the right to do whatever pe- you want to do back home. And so that means that I joined the military knowing that people would do something like that. Like, look at Vietnam. Those motherfuckers, when they came back, dude, they, they were alone. They were fucking alone, dude. That was, yeah. that's some horrible shit that And like, that people would burn and shit on the flag right in front of them. And meanwhile, they were like, they, those motherfuckers legitimately believed they were fighting to fucking defend uh, democracy and, and, and like get over fa- uh, socialism and fascism and all these different communist organizations. And it's crazy how we just forget about that, man. So to me, Colin Kaepernick is, a, is not even a drop in a bucket. It's like the mist before the fucking drop even forms because I look back at Vietnam vets and those motherfuckers got destroyed, dude. Like they were, I mean, think about this. They got back from a war where they were so afraid to just go on patrol because those fucking Viet Cong were like demons to them. 
Yeah. They sat in the trees covered in mud for hours for someone to walk by and they would just jump down on them and fucking slit their throats. They made the punji pits and covered their stakes in shit so they would get gangrenous infections as soon as they got stabbed. Like, that's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. And then they would come home from that where they were perpetually in fear all the time over in Vietnam, come home, and now they're afraid of admitting that they were soldiers. So they can't even come home and say, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be home right now. I'm safe. No, because if they, someone found out you were a soldier, they were going to fuck your shit up, man. People's houses, soldiers' houses getting burned down, yeah, getting dude, spit was, on when they get that's off That's some plane. scary shit, man. So, like, Colin, Colin Kaepernick, cool, dude. Like, whatever, man. Like, enjoy your five minutes of fame. Like, you're not even going to have a job right now, you know? You were one of the, arguably one of the most athletic quarterbacks to come out of college, right? Was he not? I, yeah. I, I, I never followed him, but he was supposed to be nasty, right? He was really good in college. He was a scrambling QB from what I remember. He's got a noodle yeah. arm, though. Um, yeah. He's got a horrible arm. But, and, and so it's like you could have just kept your head down and just like done the right thing and just like stayed neutral. Stay neutral, man. Like I understand you don't agree with the country, but dude, get involved with politics. Don't fucking kneel at, at your job. You know, it's like, <laughs> like what? If one of my coaches comes to the gym and just like sits down on the ground and coaches a class, I'm like, yeah, good job, guys. Like there are ramifications for that from a professional standpoint. But if like one of my coaches were to go get involved with the town council and try to change and reform the government, which they don't agree, but they would still go and uphold their job at the gym, you know, 100%, I'd be like, hey, man, I respect that. That's cool. But don't fucking throw a fit like a seven-year-old, you know, and, and kneel. Yeah. And- see, I see it as, it wasn't disrespect, like, I don't see it as disrespect to the flag or the soldiers. I see it as just, he's expressing his right. It Here's is his thing. right. What I'm wondering is why are they wasting so much airtime on the news and media on him kneeling like that because it gets that's, ratings man i it that's gets ratings it. give me a good story give me give me like a story of a puppy being saved from like drowning or something I, that is way more oh, interesting man. than people are always Colin Kaepernick kneeling so think about the think about the the news industry right the news industry is not news anymore it's it's entertainment it's me it's like for sure it's literally how can we hook people into watching this all the time and never look away. Oh, we show them the scariest and like most controversial shit possible. We don't show them, you know, people going on 30 day road trips trying to start a nonprofit for veterans. We're going to show them this fucking piece of shit National Guard veteran who got kicked out after three months for being a psychopath going and shooting up, what was it, Dallas or something like that? Like, yeah, like Fort Hood. It, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. So it's like they show them the scary shit, not the good shit. And that's kind of the world we live in. The, the, the paradigm we live in is that like everybody focuses on the fear based existence, the scariest shit. Like, my, I have friends in, from the military who are like doomsday preppers now, like because they believe that World War Three is coming or that civil war is coming, and that if civil war happens, they have to be like fucking Rambo and like go nuts on their whole town. And I'm like, dude, that's not gonna last, man. Like, first off, you're gonna be like on top of your house going all buck wild with your little rifle, and someone's gonna hit you with a long range shot, and you're done. And then all your stuff becomes their stuff, you know. And I'm like, listen, like that's fear. Get out of that shit, man. Stop being fearful of everything. Let's start focusing on love. Let's say, hey, how can I do the right thing? How can I interact with my neighbors, my 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 community and support them? Oh, I can get chickens and then dish out eggs, you know? Like I can learn how to fucking grow crops and grow crops or I can find someone in the neighborhood that has crops and barter with my chickens. They grow, you know what I mean? Like that's what would happen if something that crazy ever did happen. If civil war ever did happen, one, I don't think it would affect New Hampshire very much, but two, like in the cities and stuff, it would be chaotic for a while. But then small little tribes would get together, and then like the tribes who would succeed would be the ones who are like like, like from a, uh, a resource uh, standpoint very successful. They have lots of land, and now the ones that can uphold the land are the ones that have lots of people that are in a harmonious existence and not a very chaotic, fearful existence. Because when like you know like the crazy movies like oh who put you in charge, man? You should be in charge. I should be in charge. Like that's fear. That's insecurity. That that dude who's saying that feels insecure. And what we need to do is move into a world where hey man. I'm different from you, and that's fucking cool. I'm not insecure about it. Well, I know that my differences blend with your differences to make something really fucking cool, and that's love. And so it's like the media wants to keep us completely divided and living in fear. Meanwhile, there are alternative media sources that show cool shit, but we're never they, our news channels won't ever show that stuff. You know, like I try not to watch the the news. It's just there's a lot of parallels with the '60s, especially with this whole racial thing right now, and it's just too much. Yeah. Like I can't live with that much negativity. I got enough shit going on. Like yeah, dude, yeah. I don't want to hear. It's not that I don't want to hear about it. I just think that it's just way too sensationalized. Yeah, no, it's I, in your face all the time. Like everybody knows that these issues are there. Let's try and work on them rather than just advertise exactly. them. Exactly, that's my point. So the, <laughs> so ma- rather than thinking do something. of rather than thinking these cool ways we can do stuff. It's all just reacting. We're all reactionary to the things that are happening as they're happening instead of like saying, well, like for, for instance, 
I had no idea that was happening until someone at the gym told me about it. And I was like, oh, cool. Meanwhile, while instead of focusing on the news, trying to catch the newest Colin Kaepernick scandalous thing he did, I was having fun at my house. I was mowing my lawn. I was, you know, taking my dogs on walks. I was doing uplifting things. And I was in constant happy state. And where I was like trying to focus on business and trying to learn new things. And you know what I mean? Like instead of reacting to the bad, focus on becoming the good yeah i don't know if that makes sense but that's kind of what i think no yeah no i no i agree so a lot of reasons why i uh agreed to do this when we started talking is to use this as that that progression of being a better person Mm. and getting to know the community and working with them to make them better more successful put their word out successful say that better than successful um but yeah that's that's what this yeah. about like dude since your last episode dude i've been like in a zone good every everything's been going great like that kid like i said editing uh and then talking to leon legacy and like just that whole shit happened that night the synchronicity of everything and then yeah, talking man. to like that that guy today I can hey call me let's let's set this up let's do this it's like all right man. it's really interesting man is that like there's this concept i, I have i don't know if this is in like a book i, I read somewhere and i'm just subconsciously remembering it finally in a conscious state but it's like wherever your awareness is, the universe sends energy to create pixels and or pixelate that image. So, like, if you're like, for instance, if you're only focusing on negative shit, you re- you you're constantly thinking negative thoughts, and therefore the universe is sending pixels to the negative realm of reality. Where if you can stay in a constantly positive and elevated state of consciousness and constantly happy, the universe will send pixels towards whatever it is that makes you happy and keep you in a constantly happy state, right? Um, and it's this really weird kind of thing I've been practicing with lately is like I, I sit down and I write out the way I want things, the way, not the way I want things to play out, but the way things are going to play out. Like I sit down and I write out what, what this is, what's going to happen. Like what's going to happen today? What's going to happen tomorrow when I wake up? Like what's going to happen with this business plan? How far am I going to get in this business plan? And no joke, dude, like I had 30 pages of business plan in a week. It's like, and I wrote that shit down on a Sunday night. You know, it's like, I, and I'm not sitting there like, all right, I need to add one more page to make 30 pages. It's like, boom, 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 boom. I streamline, I edit, I delete, I clean it all up. Boom, there's 30 pages. And it's just like, well, that's fucking weird, man. And that's so how the that, universe that, works. That flow state. Yeah, dude. And that's kind of how like, that's the synchronicities we're talking about though. Is like, your awareness is like, is to like doing the right thing. You want to, you want to raise awareness for cool people that do cool shit. And so the more you do that, the more cool people who do cool shit are going to come into your life. You know, and that's, that's synchronicities. That's, that's those serendipitous moments that otherwise people call coincidence and yeah. fuck coincidence man it's not a real thing it's you're making it happen it's not it's not the idea of oh capitalizing on opportunity no it's beyond that man it's actually affirmation it's like the secret that movie there the book called the secret it's literally manifest destiny you're creating the world you want to live in and that's how we all are we're all the, you know these divine creatures that can do that shit but <laughs> we forget because we're so reacting to all oh, the pack preachers lost today damn it man it's like who gives a fuck dude like Go do something cool with your life. No, nobody ever says the Patriots <laughs> lost today. <laughs> yeah. Nobody except, says except for that. Game one. Uh, oh yeah, that, that didn't really happen. So let's let's dive into uh, part I know, two I'm here. Dying. Yeah, uh, so <clears throat> before when we were talking about uh, where you ended, you just got to Denver uh, before the crazy stuff happened, but you skipped over Sky Pond. Yeah. So yeah. I want to I want to get that. I don't want to. Yeah. Wanna so miss out. <laughs> this is pretty cool, man. So. Sky Pond was the third day of outdoor exploration, and it wasn't even supposed to happen. Day one, we did uh, uh, St. Mary's Glacier, which is a 12,000-foot elevation glacier. It was awesome. My sister got nosebleed. Sky Pond was really cool. Kind of just like dust the legs off, jump into some really frigid ice-cold water. I have some gl- uh, pictures I meant to send you uh, of us jumping off the glacier. Then day two was Guard of the Gods, and that also wasn't even supposed to happen. That was just one of those things where we're like, all right, hey, we, we rented this Jeep, sick Jeep, and I was like, all right, where do you want to go? So no one was really coming up with the ideas or answers. No one was like, oh, let's go here, let's go there, let's go this. So I like hopped on a, you know, all trails, and I just typed in, you know, coolest places in New Ham- or in Colorado, and Guard of the Gods showed up, and I was like, oh, it's an hour south, for, or Colorado Springs, let's go. So we, we got this Jeep, rented it for a day for like 60 bucks, and, uh, and we went down there, and that was a gnarly hike, and it was cool. Um, and then day three, we were supposed to have the RV back, but this is the thing I didn't, I think I told you guys is that like Tuesday, they were like, Oh, Hey, we ordered the parts. They'll be in tomorrow. Then Wednesday. Oh, duh, we didn't know the parts. They'll be in tomorrow. Thursday. Oh dude, there's a two week back order. So it was this really shitty situation that played out and we kind of had to like adapt on the fly. It's like, Oh, well we have another day here. Do we just sit in this miserable apartment and on the floor and watch like nothing good on Netflix? Or do we go do something active? Cause we're in Colorado and we have like unlimited resources for us to go do cool shit. So sure enough, uh, the guy who we were staying with, Max, awesome dude, 
he was like, I'm not working today, man. You guys want to do something? And I was like, yeah, I want to fucking do something. Let's go hike. And so we decided on Sky Pond. And Sky Pond was this really rugged, I want to say it was like 9.4 miles round trip um, hike that went from like, I don't know, like eight or 9,000 feet all up to like 12,000 feet and back down. And it was at altitude, you know, like it was, it was a high alpine, uh, which, you know, above tree line lake in the middle of nowhere. And it was one of those hikes, man, where just like, I was just vibing off the day before I followed this family of deer. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll find another family of deer and I'll follow them in the woods and I'll wrestle a bobcat. I don't know. And <laughs> what wound up happening was, you know, man, it was like a video game. You like, you know, like when you're playing a video game sometimes and you're like, your character walks around, there's like this one little character, like this little like avatar that sits on the side of the map and you like, go talk to him and it like spurs a side mission. Or, like you, then you gain like a little like sidekick for your mission and yeah, he, he can, yeah. he can fight and you have to keep them alive but sometimes they die and then you lose a character well so like that's what happened right so i felt like i felt like i was in this video game for a little while i was like i'm walking down this trail my sister's having fun we're not moving fast mike and mike and max went way ahead of us i didn't even care i was like with my sister having a blast every time i looked at her she was sweating and struggling but she was smiling which is super fucking cool because like like i said at the saint mary glacier was the first time i'd seen my sister be alive in years and uh so we're on this trail and i see this indian dude and he is like a bigger dude. And we had seen him when we first got to the trailhead. He'd been walking up the road and we drove by him. And uh, I didn't even think he was going to where we were going. But apparently he parked far away. Him and his, his buddies far, parked far away from the trailhead and then walked to where we, we parked. We actually just wanted to be in Princess Parking. We we're like, oh, let's go figure it out. We pull in and this car backed out right as we were pulling in. And the guy was like, nope, no spots. And we're like, hey, Ranger Rick, man, there's a spot right behind you. Let us park. So he let us park and it was pretty cool. But anyways, this guy's name was Ujwal. Now, dude, I, I can't make this shit up, man. Ujwal was getting his PhD from Virginia Tech in artificial intelligence. Whoa. What? Dude, dude. This That's... guy was one of the coolest people I've ever, <laughs> ever met. And so I see him and he, he like kind of kept piggybacking with us or like leapfrogging with us. So like he would pass us and then stop on the side. We'd pass him. We'd stop on the side because we were stopping every like, you know, five to 10 minutes just to like take a quick breath and move because Lauren was really struggling. You know, this was a, this was a high altitude endurance effort and she was not ready for it, you know? I shouldn't say high altitude as in like Mount Washington, Mount, Mount, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, but you're still uh, high. You're still, you're still yeah. higher than here. As higher than here. Is like... For sure. Higher than the highest point here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And so uh, finally I was like, hey man, you want to walk with us? And he was just like, as soon as I said that, it was like his avatar was turned on, you know? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I don't mind walking with you guys. What's going on, man? And he was very shy at first, very soft spoken. But dude, once we opened that door of like connection, once we found something similar to connect with, which was honestly, it was a discussion about reality and how I believe reality works and, and you know, the chakras and, and like meditation and, and yoga. And, and I saw like some energy in him, like, cause he was struggling pretty hard. He was, he was dying and we were maybe three miles in the hike when we, we linked up and uh, he came alive and we started talking a lot and he started telling me about his PhD and he's like, my goal is to work at JPL or at NASA or perhaps one of these private firms and you know, they're up and coming. He's like, SpaceX would be really cool because Jesus, they're kind of, must. so like, dude, th this is, so I tell him like, why am I here? I'm, I'm gathering beta and information on these trips and hikes and stuff. Cause I want to take veterans out here and do something cool like this every year. And he's like, Oh, my buddy up, who's up there way ahead of me that I'm trying to catch up to. He's a, he's a veteran. He's an army veteran. I was like, Oh, cool dude. What's he do? He, oh, he works for JPL. I'm like, what's he do? He's like, Oh, now I don't remember specifically what he said, but he said he was a high level senior systems engineer or something like that that worked on like propulsion systems nice. at JPL. What is JPL? NASA, NASA JPL, it's a jet propulsion lab laboratory. It's like where they make the thrusters and stuff. Like, like, um, have you seen that movie Operation Avalanche? Nope. It's like a, it's like a mockumentary about, um, about uh, the lunar landings. Yeah. But so JPL is where they actually like coordinate and, and like supply and build like the shuttles and the actual propulsion systems nice. that bring you into space. It's really cool, man. Fuck yeah. And, no reverse uh, engineering UFO stuff. Oh, <laughs> for sure, dude, for sure. I don't even know if they're reverse engineering at this point. Maybe, maybe they're just like in Making cohorts, them. you know, like, they're, just, right. like, they're just working out together. Like, hey, man, what do I put right here? Oh, put this thing. Anyways, so like these are some smart dudes. Like what are the odds I just cross paths with these guys? So I started asking Ujwal, I'm like, dude, like, what do you think, man? What do you think about space? What do you think it is? What do you think is out there? What, what's your favorite planet? What, if you could go on any planet, what would it be? And his answer to that question actually fascinated me. It was Jupiter. And he said, we we have no idea what's inside Jupiter's like gassy body, right? So yeah. So he said that the farthest, I, I, I could be wrong about this number. I don't remember the, the actual data, but he said the farthest that a probe has ever flown into, J, into Jupiter's core is 10 miles through the very, very outer layer of gas. Jesus. Because once it gets so far in, the pressure is so astronomical that it crushes whatever the, the, drone is, uh, the probe is made out of. Damn. So we've wow. never even gone to the core of Jupiter. 
How fucking cool is that, man? That's crazy. It well, is. That's cool. Hopefully we can get there. I mean, just the fact that something that ominous and that like unknown is relatively a stone's throw away from our planet, that's pretty cool. Um, and they actually think that Jupiter is like, like basically our planet's savior because its gravitational oh, yeah. force pulls in so many comets or, or yeah, meteors per year. Asteroids and shit. Asteroids, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, that's pretty cool, man. So That's what, uh, uh, <clears throat> was it, Shoe, Shoemaker-Levy? That was one that hit in like the 19... 19- Early 1900, maybe? That you could see it. Like, you could see the impact when it got hit. That's how big the asteroid was that hit Jupiter. Wow. That probably would have hit us. That's like, so Shoemaker cool. Levy. Like, I'll have to look it up, and I'll, I'll get that back to right, it. Sounds right, That's cool. That's really cool, man. <clears throat> I'm, I'm into that stuff. Like, that stuff, just, again, I don't believe in coincidence. So, like, that means that that was designed for a reason to be where it is. And I'm not saying by God or anything like that, but I'm saying, that, like, something somewhere created everything in balance so that that planet would be there to prolong our existence. Fuck yeah. That's fucking cool, man. Like, anyways. I used to get so worked up when people would totally denounce other life forms in the universe. Dude, like, that's... we're the only life form that's out there. Yeah. It's us or nothing. <laughs> I heard a, a really interesting theory. I don't buy into it yet, but it was an interesting thought. It was that, what if what if we are but like like little tiny parasites on the on a nucleus of an atom of some sort of much bigger organism? It's pretty cool. Well, I actually just listened to something about that, but it was saying that it's not. He was saying that that's what people think because you look at the solar system the way, or you look at atoms the way that you look at the solar system. Yeah. But he said that they actually don't really look like that. It's more cloudy mm. than like that solar system shape. Yeah, is that what you're talking about? That's yeah, just how they explain it. Yeah, it broke apart in 92. Yeah, okay. It took two years to hit Jupiter, but that's cool. I but never you could even, see it from you here. You could see it from here. Yeah. yeah. That's so They actually have a video. But yeah, there. so back to the trip. Um, yeah, man. So Sky Pond, we're hiking with this really cool Indian dude named Udwal, and uh, just having so much fun, man. And at one point, I was like, kind of, I kind of sat back a little bit, and I watched Lauren and Udwal kind of walk at their own pace. And it was cool because my sister never, I've never really seen her interact with strangers before. It's always been our family, you know? Like, like we never really went anywhere together. You know, we went, never went to concerts or parties or hangouts, cookouts, whatever. So it was cool to see her interact with someone coming out of her shell and like talking to someone about what she does for work and this, this new cool kind of crazy plan we have, we have in the works for uh, the winter. We, either she's going to move down to Florida and live with my aunt down there and, uh, and work with her on her, she's, she owns this place called the Ark, the Animal Rehabilitation Center of Central Florida. And it's in Davie, Florida or Ho- Hollywood, Florida. Uh, it's a really cool spot and she trains like horses and rehabs horses in like this really cool pool she has and she like trains that like, canine dogs for the state police and oh wow she's a cool chick she's a cool lady and so the idea is to get my sister to go down there and learn as much as she, she can from her about horses and then maybe move out west and work on a cattle farm or you know get us get a van because the goal is we're gonna try to buy her a van by by the end of winter or before winter depending on what whether she goes down or not and deck it out to a camper van type thing where she can go live on my aunt's property we're hiking with this dude. We're having a blast, man. Like, and so finally, I'm just kind of like, all right, well, they don't need me right now. Lauren doesn't need me right now. I'm gonna fucking follow this cool ass path, off, like a game trail, up into the mountains. And I'm not joking, dude. I was, I was, I was so far gone off the path, dude, that I, a part of me was like, I don't know. And I'm a really good land nav guy. I can navigate my way through almost anything. Like land nav was one of my strengths in Marine Corps, and the you know and. <laughs> I was like kind of concerned at one point because I was up on this fucking ledge, dude, looking the, overlooking this valley with this waterfall probably, I don't know, well over a thousand yards in the distance. And I was like, uh, I'm pretty sure that's where I have to go. Like that waterfall, I have to climb that waterfall. And I had no idea how I was going to get there because there was no gradual p- path down. I wasn't on a path. I was in these giant talus fields, which is like crumbled rock that fell off the top of this cliff that just created this giant field of boulders and stuff. And I'm like, dude, this is gnarly. Like this is removed. And and then I saw a cat print. I saw a fucking cat print, dude. And no one believes me. I'm like, no, there was a cat print. And I mean, there are, there are you know, mountain lions in that area, but like, Typically, they don't they don't go in valleys where they're high tourist areas and stuff like that. And I'm not I'm not joking, dude. I saw a fresh cat print in fucking mud, and I followed it. I was like, I don't I don't give a shit. I saw a couple more. I was like, I'm following this. And then it kind of went back into the rock field, and I, I lost it there. But at that point, I was in it, man. I was in it. And then I'm like, oh my god, dude, they're probably bare up here because I was well up this wall. Like I was in between two like legit hiking spots, probably a couple miles. And all I knew is that somewhere to the southwest of where I thought I was, there was a really cool like a like a camp like a remote campsite like a uh, a platform campsite up in the woods that you can rent and stuff like you can pay for but you have to hike in set up your own tent and then camp out there's no running water there's no bathhouse so i was like all right well i'm gonna start shooting for that and uh i'm i'm just kind of foraging at this point dude i'm not joking man i'm like i'm like legitimately concerned about some sort of cat following me or a bear i wasn't afraid but i was like like they could seriously be something out here there's right something, yeah, I, yeah like i don't have my bear spray i don't have 
because I had bared bear mace, but I left the back of the apartment. So I was like, I, I'm not prepared right now. Fuck, I should have gone off this trail so much. I started doubting the whole thing. And uh, I started second guessing which ways I wanted to go. So like, and it was cool because it was kind of this underlying lesson at this point that, that started to really make itself clear to me. It was like, stop second guessing your intuition. Go with your gut. It will lead you home. Like you're good. Just fucking follow your gut and stop questioning it. And so I was like, all right, first things first, I don't question myself for being up here right now. This is where I'm meant to be right here, right now. Whatever happens from this moment forward is, is what's meant to happen, when it's meant to happen, you know? So I was like, all right, whatever happens. If I see a fucking bear, just have pure intentions. Don't be fucking like sketchy and trying to run away from it. Just be like, hey, bear, like I'm here, you're there. You know, like I was ready for it at this point. I was like, don't second guess your intuition, go with your gut, you're good. So prior to that moment though, I'd be like, all right, I should go right here. I'm gonna probably go left, it looks safer. And I would go through the thick brickets or patches of fucking thorns and Meanwhile, to the right, like, looked like it was probably a wide open, beautiful trail. You know what I mean? And so it was this cool kind of dynamic that started unfolding in front of me. And um, finally, I realized, like, I took my backpack off. And I, like, I was drinking some water and stuff. And uh, I look at the bottom of my pack. I totally forgot that I had taken my buddy's trash. When we had linked up with Matt, Mike and Max way back, they had eaten some sardines. And they gave me their fucking trash bag that had sardine juice dripping from it. Oh. In fucking bear and mountain lion country. <laughs> so it's dripping come, from the outside of my me. pack and i literally was like dude i'm fucked if it, you know like at this point i was like whatever dude like i'm fucked either way you know if it's a bear or a mountain lion but i'm ready for whatever it is like, if it's a fucking bear his name is yogi and I'm, I'm bringing that bitch back to camp with me you know what i mean like he's my bitch at this point like i'm not i'm not gonna lose a fight with a bear and not get back to my sister so i start just like boldly walking through the forest not like a cocky shithead but like i know that nothing's gonna happen at this point like i'm good i'm confident and I come across this crazy fucking station. I don't even know how to explain it. It was like this weird, I have a picture right here. Um, it was like this weird weather station, I think it was. Or maybe like a bat monitoring station, or maybe it was a fucking weather controlling station. I have no idea. But it was so far up this cabin, this this valley floor, that there was nothing around. And it, it, it looked so out of place. Or maybe it looked like it was not meant to be found because of how far it was from the trail. So I took a picture of it and I was like, all right, I need to keep moving. Because they had they had the cameras and shit, dude. Like, Wait, uh, I was being... station for p- hikers that get lost that go No, off the dude, trail? it wasn't like that, man. It was like high-tech weird equipment. Like weird-ass equipment. Found some military shit that you weren't I supposed to be fucking around. I don't around. know, dude. Like, it was camouflaged <laughs> and like it was pretty gnarly, dude. It was weird. I, I don't know what it was. And uh, I actually asked Uz- Ujwal and I was like, hey, man, do you know what this is? And he's like, why the fuck would I know? I'm like, because you're a fucking <laughs> PhD genius, dude. Like, what the hell? And uh, like he was from India, actually, by the way, and he had gotten a full ride. Like he got a student visa uh, for his undergrad, and then just like stayed in the school system. And like that's like what happens. Like the smartest kids from India get sent over here, and they go to school, and they just like go to school for free, pretty much, and they get their PhDs, and then they go work for NASA JPL, and they fucking change the world. You know, like that's that's a crazy existence, man. So, anyways, that's dedication. That's, like you, that's well, like, yeah, that's like a thing. purpose. Like, here's the thing. If you don't, if you wash out of school, you go back to India where it's overpopulated and miserable as fuck and you don't want to do that. So you're going to work your ass off in school. And so, um, yeah. So anyways, I, I kind of just, at that point in time, I, I found the station and I was like, all right, man, I'm just going to start heading back down. I don't want to deal with this shit right now. I don't, I don't want like a ranger being like, what are you doing up here, boy? This is off limits to tourists. You know what I mean? And like have some sort of weird, crazy, spooky movie unfold where I'm like running from a fucking crazy ranger. Anyways, so I start heading southwest um luckily i have a, a compass on my watch so i kind of had a bearing there and I, I, I finally found the campsite found the campsite hiked back down to the main trail caught up with my sister and ujwal at that waterfall i had seen that was like a click in the distance like a, a wow. thousand meters that i caught him at the very base of it and i was like what the fuck are the odds man like it's just so weird how it played out man it was so it was i don't know it was beautiful so we get to this waterfall i'm just just taking it in we're climbing and stuff they said they were good to go they had no problems they wanted to keep going and uh the crux of this entire experience was this series of weird snaggly rocks we had to literally climb up and around and uh i mean they weren't like dangerous or sketchy but lauren doesn't climb lauren has never climbed she's i mean she probably climbed when she was a kid a bit like a uh you know what's it called um was that my phone just went off okay. one option nearby is kenny ross timber restorations on Craig drive <laughs> Do you want well, that that's, that's that's an interesting uh serious like, like listen to our conversation listening, that, man. that's some weird shit eh yeah what the fuck that was some weird at, hey listen guys Don't, i'm right, not doing so. anything wrong i love you it's cool i'm just trying to help the world like we're good <laughs> it was as soon as you mentioned that thing you found in the woods it's, it's a yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden you're google active that is fucking <laughs> weird man but anyways so they found the know, bunker they found the bunker son of a bitch at this play at this point in time um we started just moving up the rock and lauren was kind of sketched out i'm like lauren you should probably stay back like 
if you're not comfortable with it, and it's funny because I said this shit and I started moving ahead of her knowing, I fucking knew, dude, that if I said that and kept moving, she would have come. But if I had stayed behind her, we would have been there for 30 minutes before she was like, oh, I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right, Lauren, well, if you want to stay behind, that's cool. If not, I'll, I'll see you up there. And I started moving up the waterfall and went up and she was like, I, I was watching her from the distance. You know, I was kind of just like, she was talking to someone that was going, that was passing her at the very bottom. And, and, uh, and so what wound up happening was she decided to go for it. She threw her, her backpack up and she climbed it and she did it, man. She got up the fucking waterfall. And, uh, and then we found the lake and <clears throat> it was really cool. The lake was very, uh, remote and very, I can't even really explain the size of the lake. It was, it, the lake was beautifully big, but it, but the the surrounding cliffs were even bigger, dude. Like it was, That's awesome. It was just like, I don't know. It was hard to explain. And I have a thing for water. I plan on going in the water and jumping in. But we still had a really solid, you know, what, four and a half mile hike out. And uh, and it was starting to rain a little bit. It was starting to get real cold. Like cloud, cloud coverage had rolled in. And um, yeah, it got pretty gnarly. So we started hiking back out. And, you know, it was what it was. It wasn't a really bad hike out until like the last, I would say the last two miles. The last two miles, the sky opened up. And dude, I've never been in a storm like this in my life. In my life. I've been in plenty of storms, dude. Like, you know, like I used to go play on thunderstorms when I was a kid. Before my first deployment, the day before my first deployment, we had a fucking giant tornado warning. We had like a triple t- tornado. I think I actually think three t- tornadoes touched down in North Carolina just outside of our base. Um, they didn't wreak any serious havoc, but I, we were in like this crazy storm and we were out playing fucking football in the mud you know what i mean like who gives a shit um but this storm dude when it rolled in i like you could smell electricity in the air you could just smell that the, the that atoms smell. were charged it was, but it was unlike anything i ever smelled that's that out west heat it's the storm shit and so it rolled and well yeah so in colorado in the mountains during the summer it's always they're always there around one o'clock always one o'clock between one and two thirty i would say and um so Storm starts rolling in, and I'm kind of like, oh, holy shit. And I'm not talking just like clouds above us. Like, the clouds were in the trees with us. Like, they were touching the ground with us. Like, the whole thing just turned into this giant fog coverage and cloud coverage where there was no separation between the two. You couldn't tell what was fog and what was cloud because it was all one giant haze. And uh, we started walking, and, where we keep walking, and um, the lightning started. And the lightning, dude, I don't think was more than 500 feet away from us because it was the light was hitting at the exact same moment that the thunder was cracking. It wasn't like a slight like flash crack or flash crack or flash crack. It was literally flash crack simultaneous at the exact same moment. Like you and, sit on the movie. And when it hit, crazy. dude, when it hit, my hair st- on my neck stood up. Like like a balloon was rubbing by me. And and Lauren, I, at this point in time, I had just kind of like pushed down the trail. Lauren and Ujwal were walking together. And I just wanted to push up just to see if I could figure out how far away we were from the back base of the trailhead. And I remember one hit and I, w- I, I was like, like I, I took me a second to process. Like, this is the most crazy fucking storm I've ever been in. And I started hysterically laughing. I was like, dude, this is so cool. Like, like I don't know why. It just, I felt so alive. And then my perspective shifted to this point where I started thinking about video games again. We started, we talked a lot about video games in that, those few days. Um, and I started thinking about how, like, to some of us, lightning and thunder is a spiritual, like, almost like godlike interaction. But if you look at a video game, it's just like AI. It's just like a fucking thing that rolls through the map real quick while you're on the main mission. So, like, if that's what reality really is, is this kind of simulation theory that Elon Musk talks about. <laughs> that's not even that cool, man. Like <laughs> thunder and lightning is not even that cool of a fucking thing. It's just an AI that just passes through real quick for like background image. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then I was like, what a letdown, man. <laughs> Shit. You know, I was like, I was like, damn it, dude, here I am thinking like, oh, dad, take me. You know, and then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, dude, it's just background <laughs> shit. Like, fuck. You went from being so <laughs> yeah. empowered yeah. to oh, being... Just... I'm like, where's Mjolnir? Give me oh, Mjolnir. And then I'm like, give me the fuck out of here. Just let this shit pass over. I'm going to go to the car. <laughs> I'm going to go play Matt. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was so, like, it was such a weird shit for me. Oh, shit. And, uh, yeah. What a gamut of emotion. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was wild. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was wild. So we get and then we ate some tacos and I was over. And yeah, then we ate fish, fish tacos. That was where we went to Rio Grande, which is the best fish, fish tacos in all of the Midwest. Oh, shit, dude. But, um, yeah, so so that was that was Sky Pond. Sky Pond was just it was cool. We get back to the car. We're soaking wet. And Lauren was just, like, the most proud she's probably ever been in her life at that point. Because that was a pretty, pretty like, monumental accomplishment for her at that point. She'd never hiked over six or seven miles or nine miles or whatever it was in her life. You know? So for to do that at altitude and not have nosebleed like she did the first day and to not be dying like she was the first day. I think her having that person that was moving at the same pace as her was the was the vice that she needed because... It allowed me to go. It's, it's the advice that we all needed. Like that was the little sidekick I picked, picked up for the mission, so I can go find that fucking hidden bunker, and you know, and and, and anyways. 
Don't mention it again. Yeah, phone seriously. Phone my phone's off. like, it was not a hidden bunker. <laughs> like, all right, Siri, whatever you say, yeah, man. Shit, dude. Yeah. So that was that was kind of fun, and that's why it was a really cool trip. It was it was it was a it was just a long trip, but it was so beautiful, dude. That's right, I'm glad I got it in. It was yeah. well worth it. And then, uh, yeah. So then we 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 finished our time in Denver with the, uh, the dealership and all that stuff, and pushed west. And when we got to, to Moab, man, um, <laughs> we got there in the middle of the night and. I didn't. You couldn't see anything. It wasn't like it wasn't like here where like you can see the kind of the mountains in the distance, or because like the lights in the, from the city behind it kind of create this separation out there. There is no light. There's no there's no cities in Moab. There's no crazy like bright Las Vegas lights that are lighting the bitch up. And so we got there and we we're kind of like, all right, dude, this is weird. Like I feel like I'm in a vacuum. I can't see anything. Like I'm in space. This is cool. And the skies were so alive, man. They were so powerful. Like I, I got out of the truck the first night. <laughs> Actually, I should, I should say before that, the reason I knew the skies were so powerful is because while we were driving on this single lane highway going like 65 miles per hour, I killed the headlights. <laughs> and I, and, and I literally like, I was like, I turned it back on and I'm like, turn it back off, turn it back on, turn it back off. Ah! And I turned back on. <laughs> and so like, it was like uh, so dark that you couldn't see like, you do that here, you, like there's street yeah. lights, there's, you know, light bounces off of stuff, other cars. There was nothing, dude. You couldn't see anything. And I was like half expecting to turn my headlights back on and have like an aliens be sitting right in front of the thing, like laughing at me, drinking a cup of coffee. And so what wound up happening was we pulled in this Bureau of Land Management public free campsite, just found a spot, pulled over, backed the truck up. And we were dog tired at this point. It was probably like 11.45. We, we back in, we take the bed of the truck, we empty everything into the cab of the truck and we just slept in there. We put our sleeping pads down. Uh, our sleeping, you know, I had a sleeping bag. Lauren had a sleeping bag. We actually opened up our sleeping bags and used them as blankets instead because it was so nice out that night. And uh, dude, from here, like from that point to the morning, I slept probably the best I had slept on the entire trip. But when I woke up, man, I was not ready for how like I felt like I was in the outback of Australia. I walked out and there's like kangaroos. No, I'm just kidding. But like I walk out, <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, dude, like. There's mountains and flat, beautiful nothingness for miles. And the mountains, they don't really look like mountains, man. They look like, sounds crazy. They look like the stumps of old trees. Giant old silicone trees. They look like fucking stumps. It's, I don't know how to explain it other than that, but it's it's really cool because they're flat. They're like dark brown. They're flat and they have like this kind of weird like shape to the edges of them, like where like the tree like runs the down races. and turns into roots. Yeah. Mm. And it was really cool, man. It was like, I walk out, man, and there's just cars here and there and like just people free camping people literally living on free camping land like there's an rv like on blocks this dude lived on on uh moab you know in, in this little uh, blm spot and uh so yeah that was that started the, the moab trip and uh that day man we were like we had nothing nothing to do john wasn't getting until the next day and i was like well actually i think he was getting in that night i was like lauren we have a whole day to go explore moab what do you want to do and she's like um i want to hike i was like okay you little freak so <laughs> I asked John, hey, man, give me a cool road to go explore. He uh, Actually, my buddy Kelly had told me about this road called, um, oh, man, what the hell is the name? It doesn't even matter. But I had, had something to do with like elk or deer or something like that. And uh, kind of so it kind of went in the whole theme of the of the animal um, kind of thing I had been going on. So we went and drove down this road. And, and dude, the road was just, it was cool, man. It was like an old ATV road that like this truck just so happened to be able to pass because it was a badass truck. And we drove down it for a couple hours and didn't really see much of anything like, like you know, that was monumental. But it was just a different environment. And different vibe and like different different atmosphere from like Colorado and New Hampshire. So the only things I had known up until this point were like you know mountains. And, you know what I mean? And this was like arid desert with like fucking little lizards running on their back legs and like snakes everywhere and rattle. You know, like it was just really cool. Mike stayed back in uh, Denver with uh, yeah Max. Mike, yeah, Mike didn't make it past. So it's just you and your sister at this. Me point. and Lauren, yeah. Mike had decided that it was time to go home. It was time for him to head back home with his pregnant wife, and that's his. That was his journey, you know. And then more power to him, you know. That's yeah. cool though, because it gives you and your sister that. It gave us time to kind of just be us. Yeah. Yeah, and her not to be shy and in the back seat. Now she was in the front seat with me, and like we're driving together, and we're kicking ass, we're going to the store, and we're communicating and coming up with logistical plans together, and mapping out courses, and it was cool. So we we drive down this road. And uh, we, we started heading back because it was kind of a dead end. We, we I didn't want to push that truck too much because I didn't want to get a flat. You know, it was a rental. And plus, we're in the middle of Moab and there's no one out there. So I wasn't going to get a flat and sit there for six hours while someone comes and tries to find us and tow us. And I, I just didn't want to take any chances like that. So we started heading back down the road. I think it was called like Antelope, Antelope, Antelope Flats Road. I don't know. But um, And I see this canyon. It's called Hunter's Canyon. I'm like, all right, let's just go. Let's just figure it out. Let's just go down there and we'll walk down the canyon a little bit. We'll see if we see anything. We'll walk back because we got time to kill. Well, this trip turned out into this really crazy, crazy, powerful, like another 
portal essentially. Now I told you about the basically the arch that happened in uh, Colorado or Springs down at Garden of the Gods. How I'd walked up this 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 flake, and the very top of it was this big arch, and I walked through it, and it was this very powerful moment of just like, whoa, dude, like what? And so that happened again. But not right off the bat. Like I, we start walking down this Hunter's Canyon, and we see a lot of horse horse prints. People come back and ride their horses back here a lot, apparently. Uh, at least I, I'm guessing it was horse horse prints, and uh, or hoof prints. And so I'm walking, I'm walking, and all of a sudden Lauren sees cat prints again, and I'm like, "All right, the well, fuck is chasing I'm me." I'm like, "These these fuckers, no, like they're nowhere coming, so they're here, like scouting the land out." So I'm like, "All right, here we go." So I follow the cat prints a little bit. Lauren decided that she didn't want to do that. She didn't want to. She didn't want to fuck with any big cats in the middle of the Moab Mountains, and so smart decision. I mean. Yeah, it's a very logical decision. Meanwhile, I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna follow these fucking things." And so I, I actually videoed this whole entire experience um, on my phone and um, uh, not on my GoPro, just just my phone. And so it's all on my YouTube channel. Um, Sweet, to, I'm gonna look it up. I can put it. It's like a nine minute video, <laughs> but um, I can send you clips too. Yeah. So I start following this game trail that I was assuming was either from a, a cat of some sort or, or maybe perhaps the deer that lived deep, deep, deep in the valley. And uh, I just like came off the trail, hugged the top of the, the base of this, this mountain, this cliff, this cliff face in the valley. And I just followed it, man. And I just followed it up and around this crazy, like super fucking steep and definitely needed ropes for some of it. But like, I was just like going for it, man. I had approach shoes on. I had my guide, my guide tennies on my feet, which are like my favorite shoe in the world. And um, I just scrambled up these rocks and up these faces and, all I had on me was one liter of water because we weren't planning on going in the canyon for that long, but it took me like three hours to do this next part of the trip. Um, so I wound, up, I wound up going to a point where I actually kind of was concerned that I wasn't going to be able to down climb it. So I had gone up this wall and I was like, I'm not confident in my down climbing abilities to scale back down that same spot. So I'm going to have to find somewhere else to egress. And I uh, was like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep going then, see what happens. And it got to some points where I, I kept feeling like something was watching me. And I don't know how to explain that feeling. It was like a like an unsettling, like, I don't know how to explain it. It was like, I felt like something was scouting me out and was judging me and making sure I was worthy. It was, that, that's really the only way I can put it into, my, into words. Is like, I felt like something was there with me in the, in the canyon that I couldn't see, but it could see me. And that it was making sure I was doing I was I was doing things that were acceptable. And if it wasn't acceptable, if I did something wrong, it was gonna fuck my shit up. That's kind of how I felt. So like every time I would come around a rock, I would like I like I was peaceful. I was I made sure not to just you know disrupt any of the soil. Like didn't want to fuck up some sort of habitat for a snake or a scorpion or anything like that. I just took my time, tried to leave as little little impact as possible. And finally, I just came up to this arch, man. And this arch was probably. I don't know, like a solid 800 feet off the ground, like huge, huge arch. It was the top of the arch where you can climb up to. Um, looked like it was probably base jumpable. It was that high. Damn. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Um, That's crazy shit, and dude. You climbed to the top? or I didn't climb oh, that, that part. No, I went under the arch and I walked through the arch <laughs> and then came back through the arch. And I felt like, it felt like Stargate kind of a little bit. It was really weird, dude. So I walked through this arch. I sat underneath it for a little while and the sun was just directly over it. So it was creating this really weird shadow effect. And I posted a picture of it one day. And it was one of those things where I was like, this is cool, man. Another arch. That's fucking cool. And so and now I have to walk back down. <laughs> so I, at this point, I, I heard a bird in the distance. But I'm, I'm presuming it was an eagle. I didn't see it. Uh, but I heard like a like a, like like this really powerful kind of noise. I'm not going to try it because it would have come out like shit. But the, the idea was I heard this, this, this sound. I was like, to me, that was a sound of like, all right, hey, it's time to head back. And uh, so I did. So I started heading back. And... Uh, I will say, boy, I grew up in Nevada. Like it is a different kind of big. Yeah. It's so yeah. open. Yeah. And the mountains, like they're huge. Like we have mountains here, but they have trees on them. Yeah. So you get that false sense of height where you have mountains out there. There's no trees, and they are huge. Huge, and it's just so wide open because you don't have the amount of trees. Spent a lot of time out in the deserts, but like Oklahoma's that way. It's just grass flat, fields. It's yeah. just flat for days and. There's nothing better than a storm in the middle of the summer in Oklahoma. <laughs> that you can see that shit rolling in for like an hour before it hits you. Walk back down. And actually, while I was walking down, I remember thinking to myself, like, people used to walk back here in the 1800s. Like, they used to come back here with horses and cattle. And, like, the Native Americans probably sat on top of these fucking cliffs and scouted them out. And, like, used to just, like, rip them apart with bows and arrows from, like, 300 feet away. Like, that's pretty badass, dude. Like, that's a cool existence. And then I was like... I. 
this sounds crazy. And I don't believe in like necessarily ghosts and stuff, but I'm like, I wonder if what I felt, that presence that I felt that was judging me was some sort of residual energy from like the past. It was like a Native American type of entity or spirit, like making sure I was doing the right thing in this Hunter's Canyon. You know, it was kind of cool. Yeah. And and I remember being like, well, hey man, thanks for thanks for seeing me worthy and let me get to that fucking, that arch. Because if they didn't think I was worthy, they would have made me slip or like a rock would have fallen and hit me in the head or, you know what I mean? So it was kind of a cool experience. And I think the coolest part of this whole little part of the trip was uh, when I got to that arch and after I sat there for about 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I got up and I, I decided that I wanted to like, I wanted to leave a mark of some sort. So I wanted to either build a cairn or like leave a rock on top of another rock or something. And I, as I'm trying to find a spot to do this, I found that someone had carved something into the rock. It wasn't like a cross or anything. I figured what it was. I have a picture of it, but someone had carved something into the rock, like relatively recently too, because it was it was still kind of white, that scratchy, like white look not weathered yeah it wasn't like in the rock it was just like a scratch on top of the rock and i was like interesting dude like i wonder who else is crazy enough to come out here and climb this type of stuff like me and why am i not hanging out with them <laughs> a friend of mine got married uh just outside of vegas <clears throat> in the in the desert um it's called like red rock it's a red rock something like that but so where we were like we took a shuttle down into the desert and then it's like a you know state park and then we walked out and the, we're by this cliff, and we had fucking shitty cameras back then mm. compared to iPhone 8 now. But uh, there 10. looked like there was a, at the top of this cliff, there looked like there was the horse like coming out. I like, even showed my wife and everything. I'm like, look at that shit. Like it, I mean, it could have just been the way that the rocks were in the yeah. shadow, but like that's what it looked like. It was like, coming out of that's it that's cool. the craziest shit that's super cool yeah man that was the, that was the first thing we did was that quick little hike and uh and then we got back and we did this this small little saddle uh which you know john had said to go do for sunset but we just didn't have time it was like john was john was getting there at sunset i didn't want to like go there and then pull, no, pull that closer to you plus there was no uh, cell phone service there you go. and uh so i didn't want to like get too far out in the mountains and so we did the hike and then we came back down and went back and met up with john that's the whole reason why you were going out there, yeah it was right? to see was to john meet him. yeah john was the reason we wanted to go out to, to utah um and dude when john got there man it was like it was awesome because I, I hadn't seen him i haven't seen him in proper well i saw him a little bit last july he was home he was home for like three days i only saw him for one i went down to connecticut and climbed with him but um yeah he showed up moab dude at night and uh so we caught up with him as the sun was going down he had his truck set up. I, I set our truck up. We just started camping and stuff. And I was actually really tired at this point. So we just kind of sat outside in the in the dark for about an hour. And then we all went to bed and just kind of like, um, that's actually where I posted that one picture of the so the sky all like Milky Way out with his truck in the in the foreground. And uh, yeah, you're going to have to send me these pictures so I can put them up. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, <clears throat> um why don't we do this? Why don't we uh, break? Yeah, take a break and then we'll cool. come back and. Um, yeah, dude, fucking trippy shit. So Moab started off with that hike and that that cool kind of experience, and then that night the stars were on fire, man. It was like I've never seen them. I've been, to, you know, Iraq. There's no real significant light pollution there, but the stars looked different in Moab. <laughs> you know, like I remember, I remember being in Iraq, and I, maybe it just wasn't Milky Way season. I don't know, but I remember, I don't ever remember seeing the Milky Way with my naked eye. I don't ever remember being able to see it and like like looking at it almost like it's like a haze in the sky. Like it was like this thing I could almost reach out and touch. You and actually saw the Milky Way. The Milky Way, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah for sure. hundred percent. And um I can show you one of those pictures in a second. But um Yeah, so I'm sitting in Moab that night, just kinda of taking it all in and having just a complete blast. And I That's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah it that's is. the picture. I'll uh Oh, link on your sweet. put your link to your Instagram so people can go check it out as well as uh, the link to the website where you blog everything too so they can yeah, check yeah. it out. I actually just started this morning. I just started the new the newest blog about the about the Wyoming chapter. But anyways, so the next morning we wake up, same kind of beautiful euphoric wow morning. You know, woke up and I was just like, this is cool, man. Like this is fucking cool. And the, on the docket for that day was either climbing or canyoneering and i felt kind of bad at this point you know like it's, it's kind of a natural reaction to not want to be a fifth wheel you know but i they were super enthusiastic about me coming on the, this guy named matt and uh this other guy named Corey. and Corey was actually a navy vet he was a diver in the navy but they had been they were going canyoneering with their girlfriends my sister didn't she she had no repelling you know experience in her life um and i didn't think it was necessarily the most like i don't know the best opportunity for her 
in that point in time. Like I, I would be able to crush some canyoneering and go down the canyons and have some fun to repel real quickly and safely and have fun. Lauren probably would have been very scared. It was, it was a shitty experience. It was fucking freezing, dude. Like to the point where I was like, the girls I'm with right now might be good. I'm doing Wim Hof breathing techniques to stay warm. Wow. And they're, they're like dying because they're like purple and shit, you know? Like it was, it was pretty, pretty rugged. And it was funny because it was like the warmest day it had been in a few weeks or a few days. When we got there, it wasn't even that hot, but this day was hot except in the canyons because in the slot canyons it's just water pouring down and it's shade there's it gets zero sunlight so it's just like these really gnarly canyons that just you just the temperature drops you can get hypothermic real fast real fast real fast and um yeah so we we hike in or actually we drive up this place called it's the is it the lasalle lasalle mountain range um it was like this really cool um national forest that was just so remote and this dude matt who's leading this trip um lived out of his truck in moab for seven years wow and would like work jobs in town as like a restaurant as like a you know a waiter or a bartender when he needed money and needed gear and needed food but then he would go live out of the he would every night he slept in his truck on blm campground land for seven years what a life uh, yeah so Holy he knew Christ. every nook moab's and in utah right yeah moab's in okay. utah okay and it's like the it's like the eastern central part of of Utah, and uh, yeah, man, it's like <sighs> this dude knew where to go, and he he took us to this place, this canyon, that was also like really relatively close to the trailhead to this climbing phase, this cra- this big crag that was like otherworldly. It was like the coolest climbing spot I've ever seen. You know, because like if if you were to re- replicate that same climbing atmosphere here in New Hampshire, you'd have cities in the background. You'd have like in the background of climbing there was nothing, dude. It's just nothing. It was just miles and miles of really cool mountains, and it was eleven thousand feet. Wow. So it was just like like we were literally climbing at eleven thousand feet. It was so cool, man. I don't I can't explain that anymore. But the first thing I did was I went canyoneering. So while I was canyoneering, Lauren, and, Lauren, John, and, and Je- uh, Jess were hiking into the, the, the climbing crag. And so canyoneering probably took two hours, you know, no big deal. But canyoneering is just rappelling down Rappelling down canyons, man. It, it, awesome. it sounds super simple, but it's no, not I'm, easy. Uh, um, I would imagine even like the, the rappelling down the building that they did yeah. in, in Nash was not easy. Yeah, I mean, rappelling down a fixed but, structure like that is pretty relatively simple. Cause <clears> it's just walk your feet and just slide. But what's crazy about canyoneering is everything's at different angles. And there's rocks that create these little crevasses and these little areas. And so you have to like strategically position your body and ma- manipulate the rope and like keep everything centered and, and or shift everything left if you don't want to fall into the water and the water was frigidly cold so you didn't want to fall into that very often the first thing i did was I almost died and fell in the water you know and like and it's funny because i i didn't use a prusik on my first rappel i thought all right it's a short seven foot eight foot drop which it actually want to be like a 14 foot drop but you know it, it looks like a short drop so i was like i don't need a prusik i'll just zip down it and I went to zip down and I couldn't see anything because of how the, the, the light was coming. It was the first rappel. So there's still like light coming from where we had started the rappel and where we wrapped in. And as I stepped into what I thought was going to be a solid sur- surface, I went underneath the, the rock Ugh. and went into the water 100% and completely bombarded me. And in that second, I let go of the rope for a split second. Now, if I hadn't been on what's called a fireman's fireman's uh, uh, belay, I would have crashed to the bottom of that 14 foot drop Jeez. and like been pretty pretty significantly hurt probably. But luckily, Matt had me on belay. He has everyone on belay always. Whenever he has an opportunity to have a fireman belay, which is just like a weird way of playing, um, I didn't fall. And it was awesome. So I was very grateful for that. Uh, but at that point, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to stick with the Prusik. So a Prusik is just a double knot that goes around the around the rope and allows you to have control over the tempo of the rope. It, you know, it's hard to explain. But basically, you don't, you don't have to hold the rope itself. You hold the Prusik. So if you were to let go of the rope, the Prusik would, ca- would get caught in the rappel gear or in the, oh, in the, in the ATC. You. And it would prevent you from falling. But while you hold it in your hand, you go down, up, down, up, down, up. And that's how you control your speed. It's pretty cool. Um, and so... What did you guys tie off to up at the top? There's just like anchor points. You know? there? Yeah. Yeah. Like this is... That's a like, place where people go to do no, that. No. Not really. But like once one person goes, you can bring a drill and just zip in your own anchor points and it's it's set up forever. You know what I mean? And um, That's fucking sweet. Yeah. It was it was really cool. So it was a series of, I think, six or seven different wrap spots where we had to go down different, different height drops. And so... We just had a we had a blast, just a lot of fun. I was with these four people. There's really cool people. They like uh, Matt and his girlfriend. I forget her name, but they're going. To, they went to Burning Man this year. It was their second year. It was his second year and her third year, uh, which is actually on my goal next year. I want to go to Burning Man. It's just really they're just cool fucking people, man. You know. So we get done with the rappelling. We I had they 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 show me where the the trailhead is for the climbing spot. We go over there and I get down there. I I I 
change out my stuff. I get all my climbing stuff set up and I head down to this, this, uh, this face. And it took me probably 45 minutes to hike in. And I was, I was moving at a good clip, you know, so it must've taken them probably an hour cause you know, my sister and the dogs and, um, yeah, man. So we get down there and I, I walk up just in time to see Jess finishing up a route and it was like a really easy five, seven, I would say five, seven, like lead sport, sport climb, but it was a, it was a lead she was leading. And, um, so they set up the rope and Lauren, it's Lauren's time to get turn to go. So just for sake of time and like John and Jess are really serious about climbing. They, they train when they climb, they don't, they don't climb for fun. They climb to train because they have like bigger objectives. So like, this is a cool climb for them, but they had bigger objectives. They want to go do like a multi-day, multi-pitch sleeping on big wall climbing. Uh, they want to climb Yosemite half dome someday, you know, and like the nose, the nose of half dome in a day. And so, um, you were with John. Yeah, John. So it's, if people didn't listen to the first episode, can you explain who John is? Yeah, so John is just uh, a pretty rad dude. He's he's my he's my rad adventure buddy. And so what happened was we met back in two thousand nine on base uh, at the on, on base climbing gym on Camp Lejeune. Um, maybe it was two thousand eight. Doesn't matter. But we were the only two people that climbed on this wall. And so a couple twenty four months ago now, John saved my life. Uh, he was a Navy corpsman, not from my unit. Obviously, me, me being a Marine infantryman, we worked well with Navy corpsman. Navy corpsman are our medics. And uh, is that where you met Doc? That's where I met him, but not in my unit. Right. I met him through the through the Marine Corps, though. But yeah, um, he was from Connecticut. I was from New Hampshire. So when we got out, I got out like four months after him. We just hung out a lot. We climbed a lot. We we went hiking a lot and stuff. And um, when I, I was going through some wild shit twenty four months ago, where like my life was basically flip, flipped upside down. I have what was called the crisis of self, and it was a, a moment in life where I didn't. I had completely forgotten who I was and who I, who I wanted to be, and I'd become someone that I never wanted to be because I brought my attention there. I brought my awareness, and I was focusing so much on being on not being one way that I then became that way. You know, um, and it's crazy how it works out like that. But so, anyways, um, I was going to kill myself, and John John showed up and kind of thwarted my plans, and uh, he saved my life without even knowing it by taking me climbing for four days up in Acadia, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty pretty cool. So anyways, John moved out to Utah and uh, climbs and he works for the VA as a nurse out there. And he broke his back a little over a year ago and I wasn't able to make it out there to him and kind of give him the support that he had given me when I was going through my hard time. And so I felt like I kind of let him down in that regard. And so I made him a promise. I came in, I'm going to get out there whenever I can. Like the next t- next chance I get, I'm going to be in Utah and I want to see it. And, you know, like it wasn't like the same bond I had with like my own Navy corpsman that was in my unit from my deployments. You know, like that's a different bond because like, but he's just a good dude. And I, I, I enjoyed him very well. And he had been there for me in a dark time, which is what corpsmen do. And I just wanted to repay that favor. So we met up in Moab and did some fucking climbing together, you know? And then, uh, and then we left Moab that night, went to Salt Lake City where we spent four days at his place. Um, and his buddy, Kevin, who he served in the Marine Corps with and deployed with, who he, Kevin was a canine handler, showed up and we, I, I flew in from like Virginia. Uh, he's a federal, federal cop. And he, uh, hung out, we hung out and we went shooting. I, uh, I, at this point in time, I went and met, met up with Matt Best. They hung out at the, the condo or at the apartment. I went and met up with Matt Best. It was a really cool meeting, really, really fun dynamic. I, I felt like a couple times I was actually talking to myself, you know, it's kind of just kind of those really intense. I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want to say alpha male, but I, at one point in my life, I used to be kind of like that, that arrogant alpha male personality, not calling him arrogant by any means, but I was a very like cocksure, cocky person. You know, I was very like, I, I knew, I knew who I was and I knew I was, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I knew what I, or at least I thought I knew what I was. I knew what I had attached my identity to be. And, um, yeah, I felt like we were just like rapping off each other, just vibing real well and shooting the shit. And he was completely intent with my my uh, my mission, and was like, at one point in time, he actually like closed his computer screen a little bit and was looking me in the eye and was like into what I was saying, you know. And and a lot of people, I you know, I don't get starstruck very easily. I'm not like, oh my god, it's Matt Best, because <laughs> to me, like I said with Colin Kaepernick, he's just another dude, man. Like he's just another guy doing cool shit. Who's Matt Best? Matt Best is the owner of uh, he's the co-owner of. Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, he owns Article 15 Clothing. Uh, I believe he's a partial owner of the subsidiary company called uh, Disruptive Intent. And uh, he's just a cool dude. He's a former Army Ranger. He was uh, part of Task Force Bruiser in Ramadi in 2006, which was Jocko Willing's task, task force. Um, they have good coffee. Yeah, their coffee's delicious, man. And it's very low acidity, so... It's almost non-existent acidity, so it's something I could drink if I ever want to drink coffee again. Not that I could drink it, I just I don't like. I want to have a more alkaline balance, and and, and uh, coffee is highly acidic. So, anyways, had a fucking solid hour and a half long conversation with him. Uh, got a complete tour of the facility. That's uh, awesome, dude. The facility, their facility, is not what I was expecting. It, it's like a multi-million dollar organization. There, man, like they print all their product, all their shirts and hats and everything they have in house. Oh, really? Like, they print their own shit. Oh, yeah, awesome. dude, it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. All their beans they roast in house, 
Like they're not paying for some ro- roasted beans down the street and then bagging them. They're literally roasting all their beans in house. Like I walked in the roasting room and they just hand- they threw me a handful of beans and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Do you, you guys some chocolate? <laughs> yeah, man. So I actually had those for the first time. Oh they- my god. Chocolate covered chocolate like coffee beans. beans, coffee beans, oh, yeah, God. chocolate That's what coffee they were, beans. beans, yeah. I so, eat handfuls but it was a cool experience, shit. man. They, they have dogs care. everywhere, just <coughs> vet, veterans working up and st- well, up and down the place, and uh, just a lot of like cool vibe, man. There, there was a dude there. I forget his name. I wish it was Derek, but he, this motherfucker, man. You know the picture of of uh, Saddam Hussein being carried and drug out of the hole? Yeah. yeah. This is the dude carrying him. Wow. And he what? works there. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Crap. Yeah. So he owns, that's what I'm saying. So on our, in this office, in this building, there's multiple companies, but he owns a company that's like super top end survival gear. Like, uh, and that's what he does for a living. He looks like a giant bulldog. It was pretty cool. But, um, but yeah, man. So after that meeting, pretty much my time in Salt Lake City was done. We went for a couple of walks and stuff like that. But at this point, I was just basically playing it safe until Bruce showed up. And from and- from so from Utah you go to Jackson Wyoming man Jackson Wyoming the holy holy land <clears throat> so that's where we're gonna pick up go for episode three episode three possibly Part three. four uh, yeah. let's wrap this up beer for tonight is a uh, Henniker own damn sure it's a double IPA it's a little it's a little hoppy it's a little kind of grabs you by the boo boo but it's it's good. I like it. I enjoy it. My buddy turned me on to it. But uh, so the first part of your trip, it was it seemed like it was all about the synchronicity of, of everything. Like this thing going wrong, this yeah. thing fixing it. Like <clears throat> it was it was it was about surrendering, slowing down, and accepting life for what it was. Instead of trying to have this grandiose plan of I'll be in I'll be in Salt Lake City on this date, this time, and then from there we're gonna rent this car, we're gonna push down a Zion National Park. It was like, hey, dude, chill the fuck out. You're going to be where you need to be when you need to be there. Slow down and just enjoy every moment as it happens. Let go of the plan and let basically divine will happen. You know, like you don't have control of this shit, Troy. Life, Remember, life happens for you. You don't make life happen. So with that being the the message of the first one, mm. what would you feel the, uh, the message of this one was? So it was a combination of a few things. Um, one was trust your intuition. One was, one was go with your gut and really kind of just just be free man just like just don't be afraid don't fear anything don't so one of the common themes in my life has always been like let fear dictate my decision and it's something i was consciously doing it was just a subconscious belief i had where you know oh what's this gym doing what's that gym doing oh god what's this person doing all right this is what the the crossfit benchmarks need to be done at this certain time oh my god i'm a bad crossfitter if i don't get this time like these are all arbitrary you know examples but the idea is still the same i was letting fear dictate my life and i know for a fact that once i got to moab that the, the the side of me that feels fear was just like put to bed man like just put to bed you know my intuition came out strong and it was like it was like follow your instinct to explore things follow adventure because they're going to bring you to the places that no one ever goes you know no one ever never no one ever hikes that fucking arch i hit you know no one ever goes that arch but you know what my gut brought me there and my gut's going to bring me to the right places moving forward and that's that's cool because for the first time in my life my heart is in the right place i'm connected to my heart i understand what it, what it means to love, you know, what it means to like want to do right by everyone and have a complete harmonious win-win existence with everyone I know. And if that's my heart and those are my intentions, then my gut will make that happen if I just surrender and let it happen and just, just trust it, you know, while at the same time using adventure as the vessel of discovering more truth, you know, like, like this weekend, I went on a freaking spontaneous race that I signed up for that week. You know, it was like it was an adventure race, right? Yeah, it was an adventure race. It was uh, like a six-hour adventure race. I I think it could be done in four. I, I probably could have done it in four if you know. I we had some technical difficulty in the very beginning. Uh, one of the athletes that came with us. Um, now, what exactly is an adventure race? So this one particularly, mo- most adventure races are like sometimes one day, sometimes three days, sometimes four days, sometimes a week. Um, they they're they're multi-sport races so sometimes there's like you know pack rafting sometimes there's like long haul mountain biking sometimes there's um you know hiking and sometimes there's actually rock climbing ice climbing and snowshoeing and like kayaking and and you know all these different things so this one was 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 mountain biking kayaking and running uh trail running i should say and uh it was designed to be a four-hour course i think the guy who won it did in like three and a half and that was the four-hour course and then it was an eight-hour course the guy who won the eight-hour course did in five hours and 30 something minutes wow he just fucking flew apparently but 
Um, and along the way, you have to like you have to hit certain checkpoints and way stations, and like you know, there's like you have a bracelet on for the race, and uh, there's two points you have to punch if you want to be in contention to win this thing. You have to you have to punch the the well. Anyway, everybody has to do it, but in order to like be verify that you followed the whole entire course, you have to punch your bracelet with these two two punches that are at these um, orienteering flags that are at various points. Pretty cool race though. It was like a 20 plus mile bike to open it up. Then it was, and it was mountain bike. This isn't road biking by the way. This is like, this is like re- treacherous. I haven't ridden a mountain bike in 15 years. <laughs> Literally, since I was 15 years old. I decided, I let's go do a 20-mile race. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Oddly enough, Bruce liked it on Facebook. I, I decided to open the link, see what it was. I signed up for it, and that's that was it. And I was like, hey, Bruce, uh, I'm going to do this race. He's like, oh, I can't that weekend. Sorry, man. So then I was like, hey, Alex, I'm going to do this race. And he was like, oh, yeah, I'll come with you. Uh, so he came, and then finally we convinced Bruce to come. But one of the, one of those guys had some, had some trouble uh, on the early stage of the race, and uh, – Poor he, Alex. He, yeah, he wasn't ready. Like he wasn't physically. Like I don't think. I think physically, he's he's, he's a specimen. He's in great, great, great shape. Um, so I don't think that was the, the 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 issue. Was more of a mechanical thing. So he was borrowing a bike from our buddy Steve, and Steve's bike has like a traditional hard mountain biking seat, and Alex oh. didn't have any type of like padded shorts on. Oh. So he's wearing like a normal gym attire, like a poly cotton shirt, yeah. some oh. long, big, baggy, fucking gym shorts, and then like. <laughs> like like fight shorts like you have, like yeah, MMA fight yeah. shorts and then <laughs> the like a pair of compression shorts. shorts yeah and so me I was wearing like triathlon shorts which are like you know like tight shorts they're like with, with, with a padded ass so when you sit on the seat for long periods of time you don't feel anything like I'm not I wasn't sore at all but that that night or the night after like I, not even the slightest bit not at least in my ass you know <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah so uh, he he was struggling man and he also had this thing where he wouldn't go down hills fast very bizarre like i i want to talk to him i haven't had a chance to talk to him and kind of recap this thing but like literally bruce and i i tracked it on my watch we're going 40 miles per hour down these hills oh, damn 40 miles per hour down That's these awesome. hills and then bruce and then alex would go like five or six like he was just just trudging down these hills and i'm like brake smoking yeah I, literally at one point in time i was like i could hear his brakes going ah! and i'm like yeah dude brakes shouldn't be like that man like that's not good so it was it was an interesting experience though. It took us six hours and five minutes, and it was fun. It was something I, dude. The way I'm looking at it now, man, is these type of things are just training ev- evolutions. Like I have some pretty lofty athletic goals and mountains that I want to climb, and so like I got to get good at these long endurance efforts. And CrossFit, I still have to do CrossFit all the time. Like I do CrossFit every day, you know. But I have to supplement my training with some long, big endurance efforts. If I want to do big, big mountain backcountry skiing someday, my legs have to be ready for that. Which means this year I have to go skiing from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and ski all fucking day, so that my leg. Not because I love skiing, which I do, but it's not. It's more than that now. This yeah, skiing yeah, isn't yeah. the end all. Skiing isn't the end all be all for me. It's the it's the big mountain stuff I want to do someday. That's right. the end all be all. And then someday that will those will transform into some other training. So like Mount Washington will train will become a training training like a, you know a winter summit of Mount Washington will become a, a training evolution for Mount Rainier, which is just you know a sixteen hour twenty three hour whatever it is four day trudge up the mountains. It's not even that technical. It's just sloth sloth of a mountain. But you know what? Maybe that maybe then Rainier turns into a, tra- a training. Whereas Rainier right now is the goal. In two or three years, Rainier is just a training evolution. I'll do that that preceding year for Denali. And then right. Denali will be a training evolution for Everest or whatever the hell the arbitrary goal is at this point. But the idea is no longer am I just looking for this week's CrossFit workouts and then like this weekend's event. Now I'm looking for my yearly trips. And you know what? The, the Vision Quest West trip is is pretty athletically taxing and and We'll talk about that next week because the, the 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 culmination of this entire trip literally, quite literally, was middle middle Teton, you know, thirteen thousand foot mountain that just broke me, like physically. And if it hadn't been for my training, it didn't break me physically in terms of like I couldn't make it. But I remember feeling at one point in time like I'm in I'm in peak aerobic conditioning right now and I'm hurting this bad. Holy shit! <laughs> like like there are guys that do do fucking the Tetons, the Grand Teton, and like climb it at like 511 climbing ratings wow. at 13,000 feet and I was just hiking you know I couldn't have climbed a 511 at that at that altitude at that point in time I was not ready for it but next year I will be and then the year after that I'll be even more ready and then I'll, I'll actually get into this stuff that you know the big mountain climbing do the Grand Teton and stuff like that so now everything becomes a training evolution for the next the next big mission. That's awesome, man. I That's... like how I like how it's progressing but each each chapter has its own message hidden behind it like it's 
it's awesome dude like i'm glad that i am humbled and honored that like you're here to share that with yeah. us like it's it's an awesome story and i hope that we're helping get the word out as Thanks, much man. as we can like it's it's awesome like to do that well, I, mean, I love I love being here this is fun the hardest thing has got to be just letting go of it yeah. letting go of all of it and just that's what i find just kind of inspiring that all the shit you went through in the first stages of it and then just being in that point but yeah well, many people, I, th- I think, would have given up at that point. Would have been like, "All right, well, fuck this. Let's just head back home." Yeah. Like, <laughs> we just spent eight hundred bucks on a new radiator and a fucking fuel pump that didn't actually do a goddamn thing for anything important. Well, uh, let's just head back home because I don't want to spend any more money. But I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just get the Denver. And then once we got the Denver, it was just let's just get the Moab. And then once we got the Moab, it was holy fuck. Let's get the Jackson. <laughs> you know, like it's awesome. And then Jackson yeah. was when it was like, you just light. Woof just fucking fireworks and shit and so yeah man part three people (laughs) possibly for picky party people i'm excited cool good night man night and there it is man part two of part three parts possibly part four uh it was it's awesome like it's such a good story great story to listen to and we are honored and humbled that we get to be the ones to put it out there for the world to hear i mean you can go on visionquestwest.org and read his blogs look on at troy rathke on youtube and you can see the videos uh we have one posted on the site right now it's just it's awesome like to be on such an adventure for such a great purpose like it's it's awesome I don't know what else to say. That's, that word does not do enough justice, and I haven't figured out a word yet. i got to get a thesaurus, apparently. Uh, next week, we have Chad Michael Whitaker. He's a internet marketer that works with the supplement group. We're going to talk to him about that supplement and uh, just him like he hustles man this kid puts puts out work it's awesome like i'm glad i'm glad we got to know him i'm sure he'll be back on some other time like it's he's just a cool kid uh we're also looking for t-shirt designs if you know somebody uh in graphic design we're looking to make three t-shirts there will be some stuff message us at oc discussions at gmail.com uh send in your designs we'll check them out like i said follow us on twitter at oc discussions for your chance to win a 25 dollars visa gift card uh and now here is leon legacy the echo
And you hear that sound all around town, you're free. And you hear that sound all around town, that's me. And you hear that sound, hear that sound, you're free. So wake up, up, up. So wake up, up, up. So wake up, up. 